Hi, I'm Ranger Lauren. Welcome to the Charlestown Navy Yard. Here at Boston National Historical Park, we hope everyone has a happy Black History Month. Today, we'll celebrate the determination, service, and achievements of Lieutenant Commander Wesley Brown. Brown was the first African American to graduate from the United States Naval Academy, and he served right here in the Charlestown Navy Yard from 1949 to 1950, back when it was known as the Boston Naval Shipyard. In 1945, the United States Naval Academy celebrated its 100th birthday, and through its doors stepped midshipman Wesley Brown. Brown entered the academy in an era when the United States military remained segregated, and the Navy's lily-white image deterred many African Americans who found themselves attracted to a career at sea. Wesley Brown was not the first African American to enroll at the academy. Five others had enrolled before him beginning with James Henry Conyers in 1872. But not one lasted until graduation. Wesley Brown was about to change that. It was time for a change. And to Wesley Brown, a young man who believed in himself, who believed in America, and who believed his service could bring about that change. Wesley Anthony Brown was born in 1927 in Baltimore and raised in the nation's segregated capital. While attending Dunbar High School, he balanced his academics with being a member of his school's cadet corps and working most evenings as a mail sorter for the Navy. Through his interactions with Naval officers, Brown learned that a career with the Navy would give him the opportunity to pursue his dream of becoming an engineer. While finishing up his first year of engineering studies at Howard University, Brown caught the eye of New York Congressman Adam C. Powell, Jr who nominated Brown for enrollment at the United States Naval Academy. Despite knowing that an African American had never lasted long enough at the academy to graduate, Wesley Brown accepted the challenge that loomed over Congressman Powell's offer and entered the academy in summer of 1945. If anybody's ever done it, then I can do it. If no one's ever done it, then I'm going to be the first one to do it. Upon his arrival at Annapolis, Wesley Brown looked at Henry O. Flipper, the first African American to graduate from West Point, for inspiration. If a guy born into slavery could enter the military academy in 1877 and graduate on time in the top half of his class, I can handle the Naval Academy, Brown resolved. Wesley Brown hoped to be, in his words, just another average Joe, adjusting to the rigors of life at the United States Naval Academy. Although many of his classmates and instructors treated him impartially, there were those who remained firmly against the idea of African Americans attending the academy and becoming naval officers. Throughout his first year, Brown endured instances of classmates moving away from him when he sat down to eat, whispering racial epithets, or simply ignoring his presence. Uh, I've been asked a number of times, did you ever think about quitting? And I said, Plead here just about every day. But on the other day, on the other hand, when I got up the next morning, I knew that I couldn't quit. There were just too many people depending upon me. Wesley Brown recognized that he also had classmates who were willing to openly encourage and support him. Decades later, Brown told the story of a group of upperclassmen hurling racial slurs in his direction. Midshipman Jimmy Carter, the future 39th President of the United States, walked up and put an arm around Brown. Carter, who was two years ahead of Brown at the Academy, was his teammate on the cross-country team. Carter later stopped by Brown's dorm room to offer a few words of encouragement. Hang in there. I just treated Wesley Brown like I would any other midshipman, Carter recalled as he reflected back on the friendship between the two. He was brave, and I think he was an outstanding person can tell you that he was one of, of many first classmen uh, who had a part in uh, keeping me pumped up and, and uh, wanting to uh, stay and graduate. In June 1949, Wesley Brown prepared for his graduation ceremony from the United States Naval Academy. 
It had taken 104 years, but Annapolis finally had its first African-American graduate. Brown finished 372 out of 790 students, placing him in the top half of his graduating class. Only 18 midshipmen from the class of 49 received commissions to enter the Civil Engineering Corps. Wesley Brown was one of them. As Brown was getting ready to depart Annapolis, two more African Americans were just finishing up their first year at the Academy, and many more would be inspired to follow in Brown's footsteps in the coming years. Brown left Annapolis and made his way up here to Boston, Massachusetts. His first duty station as a Naval officer right out of the Academy was here in the Charlestown Navy Yard. Brown served in the Public Works Department as the Assistant Maintenance and Transportation Equipment Superintendent from 1949 to 1950. Wesley Brown showed us by the power of example what it means to be a real American hero. When Wesley Brown left Boston in 1950, his naval career with the Civil Engineering Corps took him all around the globe. His service included building a nuclear power plant in Antarctica, an aircraft carrier wharf in the Philippines, a desalinization plant in Cuba, and roads in Liberia. Wesley Brown retired from the Navy in 1969 as a lieutenant commander after having served his country for 20 years. In 2006, he attended the groundbreaking ceremony for the United States Naval Academy's newest athletic facility. Dedicated in 2008, the Wesley Brown Fieldhouse became the first building at Annapolis to be named in honor of an African American. Wesley Brown passed away in 2012 at age 85 in Silver Spring, Maryland. Brown fought a war his whole life for all of us to improve who we are as individuals and to improve who we are both as a Navy and as a nation.